Hello, this is Dr. David Kreller of the Department of Chemistry of Georgia Southern University. In this mini video lecture, which has been designed for students of instrumental analysis, I'm going to be talking about the standard addition method. This method of calibration is being used in chemical analyses. Not all chemical analyses, but some. And all chemical analyses are designed to answer a question that has been asked. The typical kind of question that's being asked is, what is the concentration of some analyte in our sample? So we have, we start with an unknown solution for which we want to answer the question, what's the concentration of the analyte in that solution? To use a standard addition method, we have a second solution that we'll make up. And this will be like a fairly concentrated solution of the analyte. So it's a stock solution of the analyte. So we have that second solution that we've made up. So then we'll take a little set of volumetric flasks. In each volumetric flask, we'll combine a little bit from the unknown solution and some from the standard solution. So you could say we'd start off by adding some constant amount from the unknown solution into the flasks and the constant volume that we take we'll call V sub X because generally we're denoting things with X's if they correspond to the unknown. If this is a hundred mil flask for example it might be you know less than that obviously 20 or 30 mil or something like that. Then we make additions into the flasks from the second standard solution and in fact the amount of standard that we add to the flask is variable. It's not always the same. And in addition to that, we don't add aliquots of stock solution to each and every flask. There's one flask that we don't add any of this solution to. In this depiction, we've left this one flask to have only analyte that's come from the unknown. These other three flasks contain analyte say from two sources there's some analyte in here from the addition of the unknown solution but then added to that has been some analyte from the addition of the standard solution and then each of these little volumetric flasks is just filled up to its mark to its total volume the flasks are mixed well and then they're sampled using whatever instrument we're using the instrument um, will give a response that is directly proportional to the concentration say if it's atomic absorption or something like that, the, the higher the concentration of the analyte, the more absorbance will occur. Use this formula, the response from the instrument or the signal is directly proportional to the analyte concentration. And so this K is like the constant of proportionality or slope factor. You know, the molarity would be like the number of moles of the analyte divided by the total volume. But remember, for many of these flasks, there's analyte that came from the unknown, and analyte that also came from the standard. Total amount of analyte has two terms in it. And of course, you know, from the definition of molarity, we know that we can calculate the number of moles of some solute simply by multiplying the concentration of the solute by the volume. The concentration of analyte is just, you know, the, the total sum of the moles of analyte that are in a solution divided by the total volume. Okay, so we bring these two uh, equations together, and that brings us simply to this. Remember that, okay, this is just a constant. K is just like a proportionality constant corresponding to the sensitivity of the instrument. C sub x is a concentration of analyte in the unknown. That's a constant as well. That is whatever the concentration is. It's not changing. It has some value. V sub x is a volume that we chose to withdraw from the unknown solution. So V sub X is another constant. And V sub T is a constant. So this whole second term is a constant. It's starting to shape up like the equation of a line, where what we would think of as Y or being on the vertical axis is simply the uh, signal. And the X, the variable, is the volume of standard solution that has been added. These three things, the K, the C sub S, and uh, the total, they're all constants. That's just, uh, we take these constants, pull them together, that's just a, that's just a constant, which seems like a slope factor. If we make up a bunch of solutions, 
And in those solutions, we put constant amounts from the unknown solution and varying amounts from the standard solution, and then analyze them with our instrument. We can get a plot like this. And if we graph this data, this, this response or instrumental signal as a function of the volume of, of standard that was added. You know, remember, it's not always the same. And there's one, in one solution in which we don't add any of the standard. Okay, so we get a graph like this. Okay, this is all fine and good. This is a nice exercise in instrumental analysis and in mathematics. See, what the pro this whole process is about is determining the concentration of the analyte in the unknown. So there's two ways of doing this. We'll describe this quickly. The first method, just simply by mathematical calculation. Okay, so remember we have this graph. We just remind ourselves that this looks a lot like a line with this, the y-intercept is this term and the slope is this. You know, we would have used a process like linear regression, least squares analysis, to determine the best fit line. And that least squares analysis would have told us numerical values for the intercept and the slope. Okay, so then we take the ratio of those two numbers, and then we see that that ratio, we just put B over M, that's this term, divided by this term. And so then, well, some nice things happen. The K will cancel the K, and the V on the top will cancel the V on the bottom. And so it simplifies a little bit. And then if you just do the algebra, you'll see that then this comes down to a form that will give us an ability to calculate the concentration of the unknown. So that's the first method. There's actually a second method that we can use here in the standard addition method to tell us the concentration of the analyte in the unknown. Okay, going a little bit faster now, let's talk about the second method of determining the concentration of the analyte in the unknown. So if you remember, we have this nice bit of data, this data set that we can plot for all those different solutions, and we get a graph like this. So what we do by this method is extrapolate this line, actually expand this graph so much that we can actually extrapolate this back to the x-intercept where the response is zero. And we'll call that intercept the volume of the standard v sub s at uh, zero signal. Okay, volume of the standard at zero signal. We take this equation, simplify it down to that very point. Okay, so s is equal to zero, and for v sub s, we'll put v sub s um, zero. And so now, then just by some rearrangement, we take this term, move it to this left-hand side of this equation. And then just on this right-hand side, we just leave this. And of course, now there's a negative sign in here. We also see that, okay, so now when we equate these two terms, some nice things happen. Ks cancel once again, and total volumes cancel. It simplifies. And you would find by rearrangement that this simplified form would give you an ability to calculate the concentration of the analyte in the unknown solution. Now there's a negative sign in here. Why? Well, it makes sense. This uh, volume of standard that's been added at the point, extrapolated point, where there's zero signal is actually a negative number, right? It's on this uh, left-hand side. So that's a negative number. Well, then you multiply the negative number by the negative sign, and it all turns out to be positive. So it's all good. It's all positive in the end. So thank you very much for watching my videos, or this video about um, the standard addition method instrument analysis. And if you like Borat, you think that Instrumental methods of chemical analysis are very nice.